Tracking is using positional data to move or stabilize footage or elements. There are a number of different ways to track things, and we're going to go over each of those sort of general methods. And I'm not going to cover all of the tools in super detail, but I am going to show you the rough setups and some of the gotchas that you might want to be aware of with each tool and some of the other tools that you might be using with these workflows. So we have a couple of different shots here. This is a very pastoral mountain shot, and it might be the kind of thing where we want to track these buildings or maybe some of these foreground bushes or the mountains or the sky. Then we have shots like these where maybe we have some soft body tracking that we need to do. Maybe we want to replace the logo on the t-shirt or change some aspects of it or just remove it. Then there's sort of translation and rotation shots like this where the camera's moving. This is something where maybe we want to replace the signs or add or remove rocks from the foreground or more sky replacements or mountain additions or replacements. So let's talk about 2D tracking. 2D tracking is where you're going to spend the vast majority of your time. Now there are other uses for this and sometimes what you can track 2D you might track with one of the other methods, but we're going to just talk about 2D right now. So 2D tracking, your main tool is going to be the tracker node. That looks like this. It has a little index of your different tracks and a few other options. Basically it lets you select an area and then allows you to track that area. We'll start a fresh one here. So if we create a tracker node, we can connect it. And you see we have nothing on screen and we have nothing in our list. So you can either use the hotkey, which on Windows is Control, Alt, and a click. That'll add a track point. That track point has two boxes. The inside box is the actual pattern that it's looking to match. The outside box is the area that it's looking for that pattern. So in this case, you want the inside box to be pretty unique. You don't want to grow it too big or too small. You just need it big enough so that it's got a very unique pattern inside of it. In this case, we know our shot's only moving left to right, so we don't need to grow our box vertically. We might just grow it a little bit horizontally to encompass the movement that we're dealing with. And this is frame to frame movement. It's not the movement across the entire shot. So once we've picked our pattern, and we've set up our, our region of interest for the tracker. And we can actually create more trackers at the same time if we want using the same shortcut. Say we want to track here. We'll set this up to capture this barn. We'll grow it a little bit. We can select both of these trackers. Unlike a lot of tools that live in the property panel, trackers use a lot of tools in the viewer itself. So once we've got our track selected, we can actually press the track to end or track next, or track arrange. In this case, we're gonna go track to end, hit go. You can see Nuke is now running through that shot, actively tracking. Here we ran out of space. We, we clipped the edge here, and this we ran until the end of the shot. So in this case, we might wanna, we might wanna pick a spot that's in the middle of our shot. So we picked it here, and we'll actually need to track backwards to capture the rest of that track data. So that's generally how you track something. Now there are some settings in the tracker itself that you might wanna adjust, and I would highly recommend reading up on these. Depending on the nature of your footage, changing some of these settings can really change the quality of your track. You know, a lot of times setting it to median instead of contrast can help if you have noisier footage. And sometimes if you have really flat footage, using adjust contrast can help as well. Uh, adjusting luminance changes can also be really helpful if you have a shot that has a lot of flicker or some strong light changes throughout the shot. These you don't typically have to mess with too much, but again, I would read up on them. Clamping super white and uh, sub-zero might also be helpful, especially if you're working in footage that is log and has some really high super white values. Maybe you're trying to track a cloud that's actually above one but when the colorist grades it, it'll come back into the shot. The next set of settings, snap to markers. Some of these, these are just your visual presets. So when you're viewing it, this determines how that thumbnail looks when it's showing you a preview of the track. Next up under auto tracking, predict track can work. It'll actually look at the preceding track and use that to help guess where the next track point's gonna be. Warp type can also be really helpful. So it's expecting a certain kind of movement from that pattern that you selected with your tracker. 
changing this gives it a little more reach in terms of accepting things that start to move or twist or rotate or scale. Then there's just some error handling here. And then there's some settings for key, keyframe tracking. Keyframe tracking is really cool. I'm not going to get into that, but it's definitely something to check out. It can help you achieve a pretty high quality track relatively quickly. So that takes us to the next tab, which is the transform tab. That becomes important because once we have track data, we have to do something with it. A tracker in itself we can use. Usually there's other ways you want to actually use that track data versus using an actual tracker node. And I'll talk about that later. But the transform tab allows us to use that like a transform. So it actually has a transform knob. And in that knob, we can tell it what we want it to do. If we wanted it to stabilize or stabilize one point, we would just select that. And then if we were to actually view that tracker and press play, you can see that now we're stabilizing here, which also brings me to the next thing in our list view, which trackers are being used in that transform tab is determined by this matrix of checks, check boxes. T stands for translate, R stands for rotate, S stands for scale. So say you have eight different track points on this footage. You can use some for rotate, some for translate, and some for scale, and you can pick which ones it's deriving that information from. So in this case, we're stabilizing off track one, and that's the only track we're actually using on the transform tab, even though we have multiple tracks. If we want to use our track two, we need to tick this box and or one of these, especially if we were doing some rotation and scale stabilization. So it's really important to understand how these boxes work because that's what pipes into your transform tab. Or if you're exporting that uh, as a separate node, either a tra transform node or a corner pin node, it's using these boxes to derive that information of what gets exported. There's a few other options in here. Again, I'll leave the manual to explain what all of those individually do. There's some things there that'll make your tracking a little more, a little more accurate. Uh, the other big one I do want to discuss is reference frame. So this is the frame that is set to zero. So if we were to set this to 1030 and we were to look at our curve editor, that's the frame that we're going to cross zero. So if you were to output this as a transform node, and I'll do that really quick. So we'll export a transform. We'll do a match move baked. Baked means that it has all the animation data inside that tool. If it's not baked, it's using an expression link back to the tool. So if we were to click on this and go to frame 1030, you'll see that our translate set to zero. This is really important if you're doing matte paintings or you're doing some paint work where you're actually using hold frames to paint up on a specific frame. Here you can set your reference frame to match your painted frame. And now you won't have to have a second transform to move that in that patch into place. So here's a little example script of how you would use a tracker. So here we have a hold frame set to 1001. We've created a little shape Basically, we want to replace this barn and house with some more trees. So we've created a hold frame and now we're masking out that chunk that we want to use as a patch. We're moving it to where we want that patch to live. And then we're applying our tracker and we're applying our tracker set to match move and our reference frame set to 101. We're then and if we just play this back, you can see it moving. And then we're merging that on top of our main plate. So here you can see we have a patch of trees moving along with the barn. So that's basically how a 2D tracker works. You can also use a corner pin a similar way. You would just use four track points, and then each of those track points becomes one of the corners of your corner pin node.